What's happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. So, uh, kind of feel like doing some welding today. So we got some stuff planned. I have probably 98% of my turbo parts uh, for the Miata. Only thing I'm waiting on is my downpipe flange, my waterline fittings, and my oil feed fitting. One of those should be here today, but the rest won't be here till next week. So in the meantime, I also need exhaust flanges and oil feed line, but um, oil feed line I have to get made. I just gotta yeah, figure that out. I gotta go to the place and have them make it for me. Um, I need some studs for this too. That's not a big deal. I'll just get O'Reilly's or something. So today, what we're going to do is we're gonna fab up the intercooler setup. We're gonna take the downpipe or the header off the Miata so we can bolt up the manifold, bolt up the turbo, and then start fabbing up the intercooler stuff because I have the new ECU and I want to get the car running on the uh, new ECU while it's naturally aspirated before I try and do the turbo. Because it's not like I'll be tuning the car myself, but I do have bigger injectors and stuff like that, and um, I don't want to have to try and set up the ECU there because it, it deletes your MAF sensor. You have to add an intake air temp sensor, which I had to go buy a bung for, and a few other reasons. So I'm trying to get this all done. So for now, for the time being, I'm going to have to run what Greg Peters calls an inner fooler setup. I'm going to fab up the inner cooler setup, get it all mounted up, hopefully today, but I'm going to have to just slap a cone filter on the end of it for the next week or so till I finish putting the turbo stuff on and I can get it to the dyno because I don't want to waste my material on making a small colder intake because I have to add that intake air temp sensor in there um, which I have to weld the fitting line and I can't do it on the stock plastic rubber manifold whatever intake tube so that's what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna go run to the store really quick try and find some studs for that turbo manifold so that way I can uh, get the turbo bolted up and we'll get this header off you know you've seen that before it's just my v-band underneath and then a few 14 or 12 mil bolts connecting it to the head so once i go get these flanges and i can get the header off i will catch up with you guys finally back from out hunting for stuff so i finally found some of the threads or uh, some of the studs for the manifold they were 3 a slash 16 and then these ones in specific have to be 3 a slash 16 to 3 a slash 24 thread pitch and they ran out of these style nuts so I had to use a normal nut with a freaking lock washer uh, I might have it in my shop but as of for going to the hardware store this is all they had on hand but I finally got them had to pick up this since I broke the hose off my intake anyway this for the turbo when I put it on and uh, yeah so I also went out and picked up this fancy little thing all my local stores were out of the uh, drop saw or the horizontal band saw so I went and picked up this one It's basically a handheld one uh, I just tried it out. It works pretty darn well. Cuts it nice, quick, and clean. So as long as I can keep my, my arms steady, it should give me a clean, straight cut. So I'm going to go ahead and get the bumper taken off of this thing. So that way I can at least get the intercooler fit up. And once the intercooler is fit up, then I can start working on doing the rest of it. To remove the tow hooks as well because uh, to center the inner cooler it, it hits one or the other tow hook so I'm gonna just take them both off. There's just 14 mils. So this is gonna be kind of tricky. I don't know if it's because the size inner cooler I'm using or just because there's a lot of stuff here. So I took the bumper bar off and I'm I'm gonna have to try and trim. You guys can see kind of this crease line where the bumper folds in. I'm gonna try and follow that up here and trim all this off and trim it all all the hooks off on the inside like these old tabs um, because it's that's all gonna obviously hit the intercooler and as for mounting the intercooler itself I think I'm gonna just weld on some little tabs up here on the core support um, and then just drill some holes in it for bolt holes or even just cut up something I already have and just weld it on there so it'll be simple and strong shouldn't break for any reason um, but yeah I gotta get this bumper back off and try and trace this out and cut this. I'm gonna just use this uh, really small cutoff wheel, just a worn down one, and that should give me a little bit more control inside of here. Uh, I just tried it out. You can use a hacksaw or something like that. It's just, it's gonna take a while, and I don't want to waste time because it is getting hot out here. So, 
cut off wheel it is, let's try and see if I can cut this kind of straight. Got it cut out pretty much, I think, as well as I need it. Um, we'll see. And I'm gonna weld my little tabs right about here because it's pretty much dead center. I need to have the uh, inner cooler a little high up so that way, because it is kind of tall wherever. Yeah, it's kind of tall. So I'm trying to center it totally in the grill, obviously, it's gonna be the most efficient. So thankfully, I had some forks left over from a previous job that I did. Ow, that's very hot. So I just cut these off so they have the little holes for me to put the bolts through. So I'm gonna get the powder coat off of here, clean them up really quick, and then uh, pull out the MIG and try and get this all, you know, somewhat centered up. So here I got my tabs cut up, except for the, the one side has to be spaced a little bit. I cut a little bit short, so I cut little beasts to uh, weld onto it to space it out. And then I just gotta clean the paint off of it. I'm gonna notch it just a little bit just to make sure I can kind of tuck the radi or the intercooler back maybe another quarter inch to really just give it the space that it needs. Okay, tabs are welded up. They should be good. I'm gonna let this cool off for a few minutes while I cool off. Summer's coming so quick. Last week it was in the 70s. Today it's almost 100. We got 100 degrees tomorrow, 102 the day after, and then high 90s after that. So, I'm, this sucks. <laughs> I don't do summers. I don't do Arizona summers anymore. I gotta find some bolts really quick. I think they're just like some M8 125s, and then I can get this hopefully mounted up and try and test fit this bumper. Looks pretty good. Pretty darn centered, I think. I messed up. I should have put this higher. I should have tacked it in place and then tried the bumper on. Um, so now I gotta cut these tabs off and I have to raise it up about an inch because it's hitting the bottom of the bumper so I can either trim the bumper out but then I'm losing part of the bottom part of my, uh, like the bottom row of fins of the intercooler. But if I put it up about an inch then I get pretty much perfect clearance all the way around. So. I'm gonna just sit here and chop this all off and sulk in my own failures. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get this reattached and I'll test fit the bumper again and let you guys know if it fits. So it fits a bit better now. I raised it up about an inch and a quarter. Um, the bumper is almost, I mean, it's obviously just kind of resting in place. I have two bolts up top and the hooks on the side. Um, but the corners pretty much line up. So all I really need to trim out, and I already marked it, this little area is right here, right around the corner of the intercooler. If I trim those out, then this should pretty much fit nice and snug. Because if I bolt it up as is, all the way tight, I'm afraid it'll kind of like pull against the intercooler a little bit. Um, not that it's necessarily a bad thing, but you know, better. I don't know. Want to do it a little bit better. So I'm gonna try this quick, just notching right there, and that should be it. Because I still have to take the header off and put the turbo on and clock the turbo and stuff. I'm gonna wait till it's a little bit cooler out since I'm gonna be standing in the sun because of where it is. So I'm gonna work on the cold side. Ideally, just gotta route it right around here. I'll have to kind of figure out right about here because it comes straight down behind this AC line. So I'm gonna have to bring it forward a little bit and use a 90 to come off here. I might have to make some pie cuts to get this sharper. Um, but ideally, yeah, just drop it straight down here and then 90 it through here and right up to here. I already got figured out where my hole needs to be, which is right here. Uh, for the piping to go through because right here is my AC line obviously it's my tie rod So right here is perfect. I've got bolts in it. So it's pretty much lined up So I'm gonna just basically bring 
I'm gonna weld this. I don't want a coupler here. So I'm gonna leave the coupler there, weld this straight along to a piece that attaches here and goes through here. So I'm gonna get my hole drilled really quick. I'm just using a two and a half inch drill bit or hole saw bit. If I need to go bigger, I can hog it out with a file or something because this is the biggest one I have on hand. Uh, get the pipe through there and kind of kind of see which angle it's going to go through but that'll give me a better idea so this actually fit a little bit better than i anticipated i got my hole cut um i have to use this elbow to keep it close to here so that way i can have it as a joint there so that way i can keep my under tray because that does play a big part in airflow of the car basically two and a half inches so that way i can cut the flange right about here Actually, no, I gotta cut it out. But yeah, cut these two off, weld these together, and uh, yeah, about two and a half inches worth, because that'll push it one way or the other, just a hair, which is fine. And then just add one more pipe to the intake going up off the coupler that is over there. And that should be pretty much be the cold cidery. That took all of like 10 minutes. I'm pretty stoked on that. I don't know how well you can see down here. But here's my pipe here, so I'm gonna just cut the flange off of that and extend that up as much as I need. I'll measure that here in a second to just get it to attach to this coupler. And uh, that'll be that. Pretty, pretty straightforward. This piece came out pretty good, I think, hopefully. It's slightly crooked because of the cut on that first piece, but uh, it should work. Works like a charm, fits perfect. Pretty stoked on that. Ran into a slight issue uh, with how far this end out was over here. Uh, the wheel was pushing it in when I turned it that way, so I had to push that in and I had to hog out my hole in my plastic more with my Dremel so I could fit the coupler actually through it and push that over. So that doesn't really affect anything on the inside there, but it does obviously affect this angle here. So now this is too short there. So what I did is I kind of just matched the angle on this uh, spare piece of pipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut through there and then cut the uh, bead roll off of that one and reattach um, or and add in this much, this little angle. And that should uh, pretty much give me the space that I need, hopefully and then um, my tire should clear. Tack this little end section up, just test fit it. Fits pretty much perfect. As good as I can get it, because I just really cannot cut straight. Um, but yeah, let's tack it up and weld it up. Here's the top section of the charge part, or the cold side, I guess. Um, so this, the 90 here goes down through uh, the little under tray thing and then just kind of angles up. And it is a little bit of an angle because this pipe wasn't like a perfect 90, it was kind of like a 87. So I had to kind of compensate a little bit and bring it up to match uh, the coupler right there. But yep. So the cold side should be all done, really tight clearance, but it all fits nonetheless. So finally, after 
4,500 hours, uh, the cold side is done. So the one cover off here goes down to the weird angle and then comes down here to just this one coupler and then over yonder into this coupler. So this is tightened down all the way and I'm not sure why because this gap here, hopefully it won't cause an issue if it, I don't know, I might just double up the clamps right here just to be safe, but this isn't how the clamp's gonna face anyway. I'm gonna have to face it the other way because the bumper won't clear that. So I'm actually gonna flip that around right now and test with the bumper now that I'm at it. And the wheel clears barely. This is heavy. Okay, there we go. So that's a tight fit, but if it clears, it clears. I forgot to put on the, uh, the bung for the intake air temp sensor. So I just got it put on and uh, yeah, that was a pain in the butt to get off the car because I already put the bumper back on and I really, really don't want to take it off because I kind of had to stretch it. So pain in the butt. Oh, you've got to be shitting me. A little bit of an issue trying to put the turbo on. So the studs that I had were too big. So I had to go down to the hardware store, pick up some new nuts and bolts and a stud because I'm going to kind of have to MacGyver this for now. So the thread pitch on the manifold like I said is like a 3 8 So uh, normally these holes, or these holes themselves are set for like M M8s. Um, so I grabbed three M8s with some, you know, flange nuts or whatever, the ones that bite. Um, I'm going to have to use three of those and then one stud because this top corner piece you can't get this length bolt in there on the manifold because the tube is in the way and I'll be lucky if I can even get one of these other ones down in the bottom corner underneath that one so uh, but I also got to clock the turbo anyway so I'm gonna have to get this done and then as for this uh, hot side of the charge pipe I'm gonna have to pretty much drill a hole here in the fender and that'll pop it out pretty much right here and then I can run it down there but I don't even have the pipe right now anyway because I have to order two inch um, so this is gonna have to be Pretty much picked up in a later episode. I'm gonna just pop the wastegate off here with this E-clip. You just take a little screwdriver, pull it off so it disconnects it from the wastegate, and then loosen up the bolts here, and then there's a big snap ring over here, and something like that, so. So something that we're gonna be doing, uh, I'm gonna try and take this exhaust port housing off, or the exhaust housing off right now so I can port it out. I'm gonna just use a Dremel because as you can see the issue with these turbos is how small that wastegate flap hole is. So pretty much all we gotta do is just hog it out a little bit. And as far as I know to take it off we just gotta unbolt it. All five of these bolts take the plate off and it should come right off. So I just loosen all five and you can see it already wants to rotate the rest of this. Okay. There we go. Well, we got it opened up a fair amount, at least like a sixteenth or two of an inch. Thankfully, um, the water line still fits. I did get the turbo clocked as I need it right now. Uh, so I'm trying to get the wastegate actuator to go where it's supposed to go. But in order to do so, I think I'm going to have to modify the bracket a little bit. I'm going to have to end up chopping this at the seam here and just straightening it and then re-welding it. Because no matter which way I orientate this, it will not come back to the wastegate flap, so I don't have enough pull either. Got it all welded up. Should work just fine now. Well guys, there we have it all bolted together. Everything should work accordingly. The wastegate should still be adjustable. Um, I forget which way rele release pressure, I don't remember if you have to turn it in. Um, or out. I don't I don't know. But hopefully if it doesn't then I'll just run a manual boost controller if I need to. And I uh, got this all bolted up. I do have one strange bolt because the hole was a little offset. Uh, you know just cheap parts or whatever so um, I was able to get a slightly smaller bolt. I think there's these are M8s. I was able to put an M6 in there with a lock washer and just crank it down. Before I put this all in the car I'll be sure to Loctite, blue Loctite all these bolts just to be extra safe. And as for this setup for the hot side stuff, 
I'm still gonna do a little bit of research. I might have to delete my power steering, but it looks like I'm really gonna opt for going through right here and then just calling it a day after that. So for now, I'm gonna put my stock header back in. I gotta take the charge pipe off the cold side or whatever to do my blow-off valve flange anyway, um, and then put my stock air box back in so that way I can drive it for the week. We made pretty good progress this weekend and hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. I'm gonna end this video off here though, so this will just have to be the first part of doing my intercooler setup. Um, and hopefully you guys found it useful or maybe if you're doing this, so you kinda get a little bit of insight of what you're looking at getting yourself into it. But if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like the video. Uh, be sure to head over to the Big Cartel and pick up a new sticker. Um, limited quantities. And then also, yeah, if you're new to the channel, hopefully you've considered subscribing. Anyways guys, do what you love for good with the rest. I'll see you in the next one. It's getting real hot out here in Arizona. Peace out.